Hey everybody, welcome back to the episode of the Sunderland Side Die Dingo Mango Career Mode here in FIFA 20. And can you tell I'm doing a post video recording commentary yet again because I've messed up yet again. I did, however, figure out what the issue is. It has to do with the fact that if I'm in Ableton, which I got a free trial of, that's where you can make music. Um, if I'm in that, I've caused like some sample rate issues. So then if I try to go back into Audacity, it causes that weird scratching issue. I might give you a sneak peek of what it sounds like because it's very annoying. Anyway, I normally would freak out about this and I sort of did freak out about it because if you can't tell by my voice, it's very early in the morning. I woke up very early to record this or to edit it. And then now I have to talk, and so it's just my scratchy, very, it's like a Barry White, uh, Louis Armstrong kind of impression, but it's not a very good one. So in this Watford game, if you didn't see the last episode, we changed the sliders and we started to get smashed by these lower level teams, but not smashed like in the legendary type. Uh, it's kind of smashed in a, we, we, it's a difficult game, and it's just we're not playing well. See, we're already down 1-0 against Watford and it was because of my own doing. I just tried to clear it with Liam Green by like turning and hitting it. I didn't even look. So we're down 1-0 30 minutes in and they are the much more dangerous team. What I'm trying to do is this, get it to Ruben Vinegar wide. You know, that was the same thing that we had been doing in season one and two. Season one, it was Declan John instead of Ruben Vinegar. The issue is I've messed with the slider so now I'm not as pacey and it's more realistic because at times, I was just running away from people with Ruben Vinagra, and while he is fast, so are a lot of these other people, so it's not realistic at all. We're down 2-0, and I'm realizing slowly, after about four straight games where I like lost 1-0, lost 2-0, drew 1-1 against teams I probably shouldn't have, I'm realizing I probably need to change my formation. Uh, anyway, we're going forward, we're down 2-0, we need some lifeline, and we're trying the same thing of running down the sideline and crossing it in, but for some reason, it works this time. So, Semenyo and Duncan Watmore, the connection of old, it works yet again, and it's 2-1, which is great because we really did need that lifeline. We needed something, otherwise uh, we were probably going to lose 4-0. Once I go down 1-0, the issue is I just, I lose all my focus and I lose any composure I had that allowed me to get build-up play. And when you're playing a PC that just is really good at holding the ball and frustrating you, the worst thing you can do is just start swinging through, through balls forward. Uh, anyway, we're going forward. Ruben Vanagra actually threw again, but this, for some reason the shot goes so wayward. Shooting is much different, but it's, it's something I need to learn on these new sliders. We're going through again. It's Elliot List, and see, I'm, the thing with this game is I'm getting bailed out by my pace, but I can't always rely on the pace. It worked for the first two goals. It worked for that Ruben Vinagre chance. But for the most part, it's not going to always work, especially against higher level teams. 79th minute, and we have another chance. Here we go forward. Renato Sanchez, who has been kind of an enigma. He's been good and he's been bad. But for the most part, he hasn't been worth the amount that we paid. As you can see right here, misses a glorious opportunity to put us up probably would have given us the victory instead in the 88th minute they go forward for some reason jiku steps off and goes into his penalty box that's something that i don't understand even with the slider which is supposed to adjust that for both sides for the computer when he's defending with me and when he's defending with the with the other computer it just they drop off and like run in front of the goalkeeper so we lose that game 3-2 not very fun times uh, now we have a game against Manchester City. Manchester City, I think they're top of the league or they're in second. And at this point, they have not lost a game. So, are we going to get smashed? We're pretty much in relegation form. But I've decided, hey, let's not just continue to use something that isn't working. And we've gone with the five at the back. Uh, much more defensive. Ruben Vinagra has defensive responsibility in this formation. Unlike before, where he could just run up and down. Well, he didn't even have to run down. He would just stay up. And here we go. We got Kawasi starting, and he's going to find Dingo Mango. This is the good thing about playing Manchester City. If you remember in the FA Cup last year, it was on an easier difficulty. It was legendary, but without the adjusted sliders. We beat them 5-0, and it was because they press so far forward and they play such a high line that a counter-attacking style can really dominate them. Uh, and 
is the question is, are we going to be able to do that with the adjusted sliders? We're through again, Renato Sanchez, and he misses. Well, it actually is saved by Ederson. It was a really good save. On initial thought, I thought it was just I shot it right at him, but he did spring out a left hand. Luckily, the mango is there. I say luckily a lot, but, you know, that's kind of what this game is at times. It's just luck. It's, is the CPU going to believe you? Is the CPU going to believe that you're going to get into a correct position to score? And that time, it said yes. Uh, right after I scored, they get their own rebound with Sergio Cunaguero. Because who doesn't love rebound goals in FIFA? No slider can fix that. And, yeah, I mean, I, I'm realizing with this edit, I don't have enough time to, like, go back and do another one because I have to go work very soon. I'm not really good at doing this post-commentary video recordings. It's just, it's not something I'm super comfortable with. You know what I am super comfortable with? Knuckleball free kicks with Dingo Mango. There we go, boys. He smashed that one home. And now, it's 2-1. If you saw last episode in the live stream, uh, he scored another free kick. The other free kick, I thought, it was farther out, but sometimes when you're further out, it's actually easier. This time, the wall didn't jump, but it was still perfect upper 90. So I think that was a much more difficult free kick. And we have a chance right before halftime, an extra time of halftime, uh, we have a chance to go up 3-1, which would have been huge because we need that insurance goal. But Kawasi, I always think I can cut it back onto the left foot, and I never can. Elliot List in the second half. Bursting forward. See, normally, if it were the past pre-slider pre thing, he would have just run away from everyone. But because it's post, he doesn't. If you remember before the patch, they would always have these crosses just like that one, and I would never get in front. I don't know if the uh, slider adjustment has made it easier to defend those crosses, but I haven't given up too many of those goals. 92nd minute, we actually have done it, boys. You should have seen me. I was yelling. The audio was so bad. But yeah, they flung a ball forward to Bernardo Silva. Didn't come off for them. And we won 2-1 against City. Gave them their first loss of the year. But it gets no easier because now we have a game against Spurs. You know, Tottenham. And Tottenham are uh, first, as you can see. They also have not lost. So we would be giant killers if we somehow beat City and Spurs in the process of... It's not even two weeks. It's the same week. It was a Wednesday night game and then a Saturday game. If in just a few days we gave two top like two leader two contestants to win the premier league their first loss that would be huge for us you can see that it's pretty much the same team a few slight adjustments but the same formation same tactics and just to give you an idea who who they are because it's tottenham and why are they so good they do have a lot of the same guys but they have a different back line completely hugo Lloris has been stripped of his captaincy controversial i think so yes going forward dingo finds huang and bum early and we need to get more goals from the center mids i think part of it is i don't know how to shoot with them yet but also part of it is their shooting just isn't too great harry kane shooting master extraordinaire hits the dembaba luckily sirigu calmly punches it out sirigu is good but also he makes these questionable decisions when he's coming out this again huang and bum second chance he should be two nil up this is tottenham hotspur top of the league undefeated for the year we're not even testing the goalkeeper. At halftime, the thing with this style is it's a very defensive style. It's a very defensive formation. So I don't always have highlights to show you guys. At least we get the victory. But what I liked about the 3-4-1-2 is it's so attacking that I have things like this to show you all the time. But usually, I would bury that. Renato Sanchez, another chance for a midfielder and another chance goes begging. We had to bring Elliot List on at this point. We also, in a conjunction with that, we made a bunch of changes. I took off Renato Sanchez because he was on a yellow card and he was pretty tired, uh, and then I moved some people around. Going forward now, 77th minute, Ruben Vinagra. He's learning his old ways, but he still can get forward. That's what I don't want. I don't want him to just sit back. I do want the computer to randomly dive into a challenge in the 78th minute when it's nil-nil and I had no one to cross to with a man already on a yellow card. So he gets sent off, and it's a penalty. And of course, there's only one man. There's only one man go that can step up, and it's Dingo, and he buries that baby. So yet again, it's going to end 1-0. They pass it around the back. What, what I would like to see is the computer have a little bit more urgency, realizing that they're down 1-0, and their invincibility status is about to go out the window. The team ratings weren't too good. Ruben Vinagre gets man of the match. Dingo had a goal. Uh, but really outside that, the, the defense was good. 
And then uh, here we go with a Europa League match. I am just going to simulate this one because we're already through. This is the final group stage match. And we are through, but it is important. If I got this victory, then I would top the group. But my thinking was I'm going to have to win the games anyway. So does it really matter what level of opponent I'm going to play? Some of you guys will probably say yes. But I said no and got smashed 5-1. So who's the real genius? Now, it's a game against Leicester. These games have not gotten easier. But they're games that we need to win because we lost those other games against Leicester opponents. So those are games that I believe Leicester, Tottenham, Manchester City are going to win. And we'll need to try to make up points somehow and no better way than to beat them directly. But they get an early chance and hit the post. Probably should have scored that with Keita Balde Dio. What I want Sunderland to do is become basically like Leicester. If you get a season, multiple seasons, where you do very well in the Premier League, it ups your status and you get shirt sales, you get revenue coming in, which allows you to buy higher players, like that Keita Balde Dio. So that is what I would like for us to do with Sunderland. And it can all start with the Dingo. I mean, the Dingo Mango, right there, he did his best most Salah impression. I remember someone in the comments told me, you have to make Dingo your most Salah. And that's what I'm trying to do right there. They do go forward here and put in a dangerous ball. Sirigu definitely has that, right? Um, okay, see, that's what I was talking about earlier. Sirigu, sometimes, just making questionable decisions, and I don't really know why. Semenyo, have we all forgotten who Semenyo is? Because he just doesn't get in the goals anymore. Does he, he had one goal this episode. He was just banging in goals left, right, and center in the last one. And you know what? I'm not too mad about it. Semenyo's good, but he wasn't that good. He shouldn't be that level. That level was more than anyone in real life is ever, except for like Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi. And I was just doing with, with Antoine Semenyo. Antoine, if you're watching this, I do still love you and you are invited to my birthday party. They whip it in and they don't score off crosses as much as they used to, which is a good thing for me because they used to score off crosses every single time and it would just kill me inside slowly. They have a chance. Here we go with Dingo just weaving by, but I always mess up with the shot and go right at him. Cardenas now, and the dying embers of the game, we're still pushing forward, which maybe we shouldn't, but I haven't adjusted my other tactics, and Cardenas is pretty good. If he just finished, if he figured out his finishing, he would be so much better. The issue is, because he's so big and strong, you can't get the ball off him, which is only an issue for the opponent, because I like it, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, that, that one finishes 1-0. Yet again, kind of a boring match, but uh, we'll take any win that we can because a 1-0, a victory, is three important points for us. Renato Sanchez did get injured in that game, and he broke his toe, so he's out for two months. And that is huge for us because we are in eighth. We're in a pretty good position. We might be able to get into fourth, but it's not necessarily going to happen. But we're going to lose Josh Gowan in the summer in the winter transfer because he's already he's just so upset. And now we're out for two months with Renato Sanchez. So our midfield is dire. We need some help. I need you guys down below. Let me know who should I get for a center mid. It just needs to be a temporary replacement, nothing huge, but I need someone. Anyway, thank you guys as always for watching and don't forget to spay your pets.